Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital. This is Head Market Analyst diving right into the charts with you on some technical analysis and fundamental analysis on natural gas. So over the last three to four months, natural gas has been one of the best performing commodities. Um, just like many of the other energy commodities, it is going through its initial repricing um, hike and uh, spike in, in overall pressure. And there's a lot of geopolitical tensions that are causing natural gas to go parabolic, as you can see on the gas. But when an asset class from the low in January rises all the way to the high of, of uh, this week, it's roughly increased 111%. When an asset that your citizens, especially in Europe, rely on at such a, a great level, um, there starts to become this bias against politicians. And whenever the politicians are up against an inflationary battle, that is always an uphill battle. People will always remember things that affect them directly. And the price of natural gas spiking literally more than doubling in less than um, three months is a cause for concern for politicians because it directly affects the majority of the population that they, you know, govern. And when you have the majority of, of G7 countries actually living paycheck to paycheck, um, high energy prices are detrimental to the consumer. And full disclosure, we are shorting natural gas. Now, natural gas has. Um, blown through many, many resistance levels as of late. And that's due to the geopolitical nature of the fact that um, Europe and a lot, many of the other G7 countries are no longer accepting Russian energy. And natural gas are one of the commodities that they refuse to buy from, um, more so starting next year. So they have a kind of a transition plan, plan but natural gas will no longer be purchased um, by the G7 countries from Russia. And Russia, it's not that Russia is not willing to sell their natural gas, they just want their natural gas now sold in rubles. So the G7 countries still have the option to buy natural gas. Nonetheless, we are in a war and they would be supporting the Russian economy by doing so. But it certainly poses a existential crisis for Europe when they rely so heavily and on Russian energy as opposed to North America. And every day that passes and Europe digs their heels in, in terms of not buying Russian energy or not settling their Russian contracts in rubles, it puts more pressure on the consumer. And ultimately the consumer and the public dictate which party is going to be in power, dictate how, you know, who's going to be elected, and, and ultimately dictates the policies that should be implemented by each party. So I am speculating, but every passing day that Europe and especially Germany refuse to buy Russian energy, it's going to naturally increase the price and put a tremendous amount of pressure on their citizens. So that being said, we're trying to analyze where natural gas prices are halted and see some form of resistance because they've gone completely parabolic. You're on a one, two, three, four, five week time count now. One can argue this is a three bar surge to a high. Um, potentially there is still a little more upside based off of the technicals. But now with the fact that we are entering the um, stocking season for natural gas, so I believe that the withdrawal period, and according to the NGI, the Natural Gas Intelligence, Last week's 33 um, billion cubic feet pull out of supply is going to be the final big pull out of the withdrawal season. And the new estimates are ranging that the um, natural gas will start to build anywhere in the range of 5 billion cubic feet to 29 billion cubic feet. So when you have supply being withdrawal, that's obviously a bullish, bullish fundamental. But when you have supply now starting to build in the form of reserves, that's going to be more of a bearish driver that should halt the price, you know, in the, in the short term. So if we start recognizing builds across the board in the form of reserves for natural gas, then that should help slow the price. 
And the fact that we are entering the seasonality period where the people in Europe and around the world rely less heavily on natural gas due to warmer temperatures, it does support the thesis that the expectations in building up natural gas should put pressure to the downside on natural gas. And then when you factor in the near resistance lines that we are approaching, so you have one here, you have one here, okay, so the price action is not that very high. So you have those two trend lines. Simply having two trend lines is not enough. Um, I like to do a lot of long-term cycle analysis. As you can see down here, you have many different cycle periods in natural gas. And with the majority of cycles completing and demonstrate, whenever you reach the midway point to three quarter point of the natural gas cycle, there's usually that last quarter of the cycle natural gas collapses. So what's interesting here is we've reached basically the midpoint and now we're at that three quarter mark and statistically, historically speaking, the price should start to come down. So when we factor in these trend lines, when we factor in the fact that um, supply should start building, and then we also have some longer term trend lines. If we take the pivot high in September of, 20, of 2005, connects to the pivot high in 2008, you can also see that again, we're approaching that trend line of resistance. And then simply having a confluence of trend lines in one specific zone will act as resistance. So you can see here by having three different trend lines, we are approaching them. A couple of them are intersecting at key levels. So this confluence of trend lines should act as resistance in the short term. Um, that being said, I was doing some cycle analysis and when you factor in the energy movement and I wanted to go over the oil chart again, because I think it has a strong correlation to potentially what the price action of natural gas and the likelihood of, of it acting the same way is key. So when you factor in oil, and if you look at previous cycles in oil, there's typically a four to eight week delay in when oil tops and natural gas tops. So right now we witnessed, I believe, oil topping here back in early March. So we've had one week, two week, three week, four week, five weeks, six weeks of downside in oil since it put in its weekly topping tail bearish signal. And that was amazing, amazing short trade that we issued to our members. But since it's now been six weeks in oil, we're getting into that time frame of that four to eight week window where typically oil tops and then natural gas tops or vice versa, natural gas tops and then four to eight weeks later oil tops. It just so happens that I believe in this cycle period, oil has made the top first and within that four to eight week window, natural gas will follow. So understanding that they typically have a correlation of four to eight week cycles in terms of when both commodities top puts more of a probability that we are running into that time frame for natural gas to find a top. And then simply analyzing, I wanted to find out, okay, so we made this pivot high here around the 130 mark on natural gas. All of the analysts across the industry were calling for oil to go to 200 and 100% take out its all time high back in 2008. But we were had the opposing view the whole time that oil was spiking. It was only a matter of if, um, sorry, it was only a matter of when oil would collapse, not a matter of if. And certainly we wanted to point out this long term trend line. And one of the reasons I went back to this, I was, I was wondering, I was like, okay, oil had this parabolic move, which we clearly won't deny and fight. And natural gas has had this parabolic move. So is there a trend line that connects major pivot zones over the long term that gave us a distinguished top in oil? So here we have a 1990 pivot. And we also have the major pivot in 2014 before the big existential sell off happened in oil leading all the way into 2014, 2015 and 2016. So what's interesting is that's when we started really noticing the interest rates hike cycle starting and the, co the economy responded negatively. And then when we reached the peak in 2018, the economy also responded negatively. 
So we kind of had these two initial bouts of selling when the interest rates started and then when the interest rates peaked. And when you factor in this trend line, so we had a 1990 peak in oil, an intersection with the 2014 um, sell-off zone, and then the weekly topping tail. So we have three major, major pivot zones going back in price cycle. So then that made me think, okay, can I find a 1990 peak, which we have here, which was one of the first peaks that natural gas put in, and can I find a 2014 peak, which we have here? So just like oil, there are two key peak pivot zones that we can use as a guide. So if we connect the pivot zone from 1990 and the pivot zone from 2014, just like oil, you can clearly see that by this blue line here, or sorry, this yellow line here, I just changed the color, a major, major resistance is approaching. And then you factor it in with the confluence of all the rest of these long-term trend lines. I believe a significant resistance zone is in effect. A lot of natural gas analysts, the so-called professionals, are once again calling for us to take out the 2008 highs, which is around the $14 mark. And just like they were calling for oil to take out the 2008 pivot high, which we clearly failed, I think natural gas is also going to fail in that sense and not take out the 2008 highs. I think this trend line since 1990, 2014 is going to act as a major cycle guide, just like it did for oil where it put in our top. So again, we'll have to monitor this trend line closely. It's roughly does suggest there's potentially a little bit more of upside left, another seven to eight percent upside until we hit the top of that channel. But it will be really interesting with the confluence of all these trend lines with the fact that we're now entering a fundamental point where the withdrawal season is slowly coming into the building season of natural gas, it kind of does make sense that the technicals are aligning with the fundamentals once again. And that's what I love about charts is when you have factors of technical resistance aligning with the fundamentals, you have a high probability of success in finding a major top in the period and just following based off of previous cycles. Natural gas this high only contributes to inflation. And what are our policymakers around the world currently fighting? Inflation. So you throw that into the fact, you throw the technicals into the fact, you throw the fundamentals of a building season into the fact, and you throw the fundamental drivers that our politicians are now their main objective, while they say their main objective is to fight inflation. You have to really consider the fact that natural gas has had a parabolic move and that a pullback to the resistance zone of 630 is a likely, likely scenario. And that would roughly be from the current highs a nice 14% pullback, which would substantially put us in the money on our short positions. So I hope this video helps. Nothing goes straight up in a straight line. Yes, we have tons of geopolitical tensions, but one more factor too is that each and every day that passes with natural gas rising and rising and rising, it puts more pressure on the likes of Germany uh, and, and the UK and all the G7 countries in Europe um, to really reconsider about potentially buying some Russian natural gas. Maybe they don't have to buy what they usually do, but buying some will naturally lower the price and the overall um, rest the, the restraints on the overall supply demand ratios. So many factors to contribute, but I think we're on the brink of potentially these G7 countries saying, okay, let's, let's ease back. We're now hurting our citizens too much with a hundred over a hundred percent increase in energy prices. So let's try to have some sort of middle ground where we're not supporting the economy, the Russian economy as much, but we are kind of supporting our citizens to some extent. So maybe it's like a 70-30 relationship that they find. I'm speculating here, but when you have a parabolic move, you can be sure that citizens, once they click on with how much their energy bills change for the worse, there's going to be some sort of political backlash. Take care, everybody.